Joining us right now with his thoughts on the financials is Kevin Heal. He's a senior analyst and fixed income strategist for Argus Research. And Kevin, um, what do you attribute the gains across the board to today? Uh, good morning, uh, Becky. Uh, you know, we, I think it's, you know, more of a, you know, ease that we're going to get, you know, maybe this, the worst is passed amongst the banking sector and that, um, you know, we see some, we've seen some kind of resolution with the uh, re regional banks and the Fed and allowing them to, uh, you know, backstop their assets and, and, and pledge those in the new funding programs. Um, you know, we believe that, uh, you know, all deposits will eventually be backstopped by the Fed and, you know, it's potentially run into a different levels of whether it's a retail or a business deposit. If, if that's the case, if you think part of the reason behind this is because people are convinced that backstopping, uh, backstopping all deposits will be the answer, I mean, it looks like it's a pretty heavy political lift. The Freedom Caucus, 45 members in the House, came out yesterday and said they're opposed to any idea, either implicit or explicit when it comes to backstopping all of these things. They think it's just going to lead to riskier behavior down the road. And if you've got a 45-member caucus in the House saying no way, um, what makes you think that this is actually something that happens? Well, I, and as I mentioned, I, you know, it could be bifurcated. It could be that, you know, you know, the big concern is for you know, the average consumer is worried about whether or not his deposits are going to be guaranteed. But for the most part, you know, 250 and under, you do have those deposits guaranteed. Sure. The question becomes, you know, what do you do about your business, you know, banking relationship? You know, if you have, you know, $10 million in, in cash flow in your, you know, business bank, uh, you know, it's not really feasible to have 40 different banks. So something has to be done, or maybe there's levels of deposits that get insured or when when you look across the board, just in terms of what happens to the bank stocks, but also what happens to the economy as the result of liquidity kind of drying up, how how do you try and come up with the, what what you think is a fair and reasonable price for stocks at the, for financial stocks at this point? Yeah, you know, obviously the the multiples are down uh, right now, and a lot of the you know we're we're looking at you know. Um, you know that looking at the regional banks that we cover at at Argus and um, looking at their investment portfolio, their 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 different available for sale or held to maturity. Uh, looking at you know liquidity, but most the other regionals that we do cover, um, you know, have a pretty diverse customer base and all have active uh, hedging strat interest rate hedging strategies in place. Meaning that you think that these are, are solid banks and, and stocks that you would recommend? Yes, absolutely. We, uh, you know, we had a, a list out on Monday and, uh, you know, a couple of banks that we, you know, continue to like, Citizens, Huntington, Regions, all feel that we have a, you know, diverse customer base versus the SIVB that was pretty much, you know, the tech industry startup bank.